Hello my creative critters and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and today's video is the second video in my 500 drawing prompt series. If you haven't seen the first video, I would encourage you to do so because I set a bunch of rules for myself and one of those rules being combining one full page of prompts or if there is just one prompt on a page, I'm doing one full spread. So this video's drawing prompts are zombies and sandcastle. So I kind of just started drawing a sandcastle and started thinking about what animals would walk around the beach that I could zombify since another rule I made for myself is to try to incorporate an animal somehow in each drawing. So I first thought about crabs, but they're basically already skeletons. And what other animals can you see walking around the beach and stealing people's french fries? Seagulls. So I started off by sketching some seagulls and then tried exposing flesh here and there. Maybe one lost a foot or his neck is exposed. Lost some feathers here and there. It's hard to make that come across super clear when it's a quick sketch. And I realized the more disheveled I made the seagulls look, the more they look like vultures or something. I suppose it would be more readable with the seagull coloring on it. But anyway, this is just the sketch time to figure out an idea. So I didn't spend much time on it. So I was thinking maybe I'll do a drawing of a few zombie seagulls pecking at and destroying a sandcastle, like a zombie apocalypse situation, but with zombie seagulls, which sounds pretty silly, so I might do that in the future maybe. But then I started thinking about a really sad image I saw while researching for a ceramic sculpture project project in college and I came up with a concept of a sea lion pup being choked by a plastic bag and I actually found some early sketches I drew up as part of my project proposal before I chose the sea lion to do. And you can see I drew a few different animals caught up in plastic somehow. And I think I ended up choosing the sea lion pup because I just really wanted to sculpt the sea lion if I'm honest and make it really wet looking with tons of glaze on it. But you can see in that sketch I also drew a squirrel with his head stuck in a cup and a bird with his head stuck on one of those plastic dome caps from like frappuccinos or slurpees or something. And while drawing these, I saw a photo that really stuck out to me and it was actually one of the ones I was really leaning towards doing instead of the sea lion as a sculpture because it really stuck with me even today. And I'll see if I can find the same image again and I'll leave a link in my description to it if you want to see it. I'm going to add a little trigger warning here because it is a photo of a bird with his lower beak stuck through a plastic cup lid through the straw hole part, making it hard for him to eat and he sadly died. It's not super graphic or anything like that. There's no guts or anything like that, but it is pretty sad still. So I thought I'd leave a trigger warning here just in case you want to check it out. It's crazy that this bird was probably just trying to get some food in the trash and while doing so poked his beak through the hole of this plastic lid or cap and sadly it probably wasn't long after and that was it for him. So I was thinking what if animals who get caught in plastic or other man-made litter turn into zombies and haunt us? But then after doing another sketch of a sandcastle, I thought, what if this seagull was flying away from the sandcastle and the seagull has a plastic lid on his beak too? So I started sketching a little thumbnail so I could plan it a little bit and draw it bigger and in more detail on the next page. Thumbnailing is where I get the composition how I want it and ideally I should do a ton more of these, but your girl just didn't want to. And it's one of those things that I know I should do. I know why I should do it, but I just don't. I remember in art school, professors would want us to draw like 50 thumbnails before we actually get started in our project. And I'm like, this project is due when? And you want us to do 50 small versions of it before we can even get started? Like, <laughs> anyway, for this drawing, I think the sandcastle kind of represents something man-made because let's be real, those fancy sandcastles obviously don't just happen in nature. So maybe the seagull is trying to fly away and escape from it, but it's just too late and he's already stuck in the man-made plastic. While drawing the sandcastle part, I was forced to pay a little bit more attention to perspective. I usually just avoid architecture and anything with real strict perspective, lines and things like that because I just don't like it. And even though I was looking at a reference for the sandcastle, I still didn't do it real well and definitely something I should work on more. Will I though? That's a different question. I'll never forget the first project we had to do in my illustration beginning course is draw this light switch to perspective and it was just so not to be dramatic but traumatic. <laughs> it was the first time I really had to technically measure out each part of the light switch and since the light switch is more complicated than just the switch part that you see coming out of the wall obviously there's all kinds of weird metal plating and like where the nuts go or the screws or whatever and we actually had to 
measure all of the lines and parts to make it to scale in our perspective drawing. And we were kind of graded on how accurate it was. And it was just so stressful for all of us really because we're all illustration majors. And yeah, perspective is obviously super important, but it was the first time we all had to do something so precise like that. And it's funny, me and my classmates still joke about it today because we were kind of struggling through it together. And we called it kind of a trauma bonding experience in a way, or just something in common to complain about really. But anyway, I guess that's another good thing about prompts is that it forces you to get out of your comfort zone sometimes too. So after sketching the sandcastle, I kept looking over at my thumbnail throughout this, by the way, to keep the composition similar at least to what I started off with. And I started drawing the seagull stuck in the plastic lid. I also realized that when I was making the thumbnail, I didn't have anything in that upper left corner. It was just straight up blank. And since it was such a small thumbnail, I guess it wasn't super glaring to me. But now that I'm drawing it way bigger, well, it was a much larger open space, obviously. So I added some cloudy texture behind it, or if I end up coloring it digitally or revisiting this, I might have that be the ocean shore or something like that. Or maybe a night sky with stars with those Cinderella leading the ball at night vibes, you know? So I decided to ink this drawing because after seeing that this paper hates the water from trying it in last week's prompts, which is also why this first page of sketches is kind of crinkly. I tried to flatten it as best I could, but anyway. So I decided to just do some simple line art on it and it didn't bleed through too much, but still a little. So you might see it a little bit in the next prompts I do, whenever that is. I probably won't be doing these prompts weekly, but since I had so much fun last week, I thought I'd do it again. But I do have some other video ideas. So if you haven't already, I would highly suggest you subscribe if you enjoy art and animal related content. It's a good time if you ask me. Anyway, I use a really thin liner to do the castle in the background to make it push further in the distance. And I didn't want to go too nuts with the line art back there and texturing and all that because I really wanted the focus to be on the seagull in the front. Finally, I went in with a little white gel pen to give a little highlight in the eye and clean up some thick lines here and there. Looking at this drawing now, the plastic lid reads more like a CD or something. But overall, I like how this whole drawing turned out. So I know technically I didn't draw zombies and you can even argue this doesn't even look like a sandcastle and more like a regular castle since I didn't really render the texture much and it's not in color, which might make it more readable as a sandcastle too. But honestly, I just really love this message and concept more than if I really tried to stick to the prompt so literally. And I think at the end of the day, that's what prompts are for. They are meant to exercise your creativity and help you come up with ideas that maybe you wouldn't have without the prompt. And I can tell you 100% that I would have never drawn zombie seagulls if I didn't have to pair zombies with a sandcastle somehow. I feel like if I just limited myself to drawing each page and only had zombies as the prompt, I would have just gotten bored and probably drew some zombie animals or something or try to do maybe some of my animal hybrid characters as zombies or something. But having that sandcastle prompt too really steered it in a whole other direction. So I guess if you're doing prompts of any kind, whether it's for a school project or just for fun like Inktober, I think it's always really important to remember that the fun of having prompts is to maybe not think of it super literally and seeing where your imagination takes you. And for me, that's the fun part. I love thinking of crazy, stupid, silly ideas and then making it come to life in an illustration. So I really hope you guys are enjoying this series as much as I am. And don't forget to leave a like if you did and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video for you guys every Friday and I'd love to have you come along on my YouTube journey and become a creative creator with us. As always, I have links to the supplies I use in this video, all of my social media and more in the description box below so you can see what else I create. Especially follow me on Instagram because I'm the most active there and and please, please, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think of this drawing and of this series or any other constructive feedback is always welcome. I respond to everything, so please don't be shy. I love chatting with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay creative and I'll see you in next Friday's video.